Okay, hello. Let's try to straighten this out as much as possible. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a... Uh, oh, it's getting so warm already. Fan off, window closed. Here we go. Um, <laughs> okay, th this might be a long video. Uh, and I'm going to uh, be sweating towards the end of it. Uh, but I do that for you, so that, so that you don't have to put up with a bunch of noise from the fan and from the outside. Anyway, uh, this is a DVD and Blu-ray uh, upda update. Um, I've said that like a thousand times before, but I still managed to fuck it up. So, um, I'm just gonna give you a bit of a, a sneak peek at what we have here. <laughs> here we go. I might not get to all of that, but I just brought up all, all the stuff that I have to show. Uh, well, I do have like just as as much stuff, if not more, right behind me. Um, actually, I have a lot more because there's some stuff around my TV as well that I haven't shown. But that stuff I haven't seen yet. Um, well, some of these titles I haven't seen yet either, but I choose to include some of them now anyway because I might not really plan on seeing them anytime soon. And so uh, with the rest of the stuff, I'm kind of waiting until I've seen them. Uh, or if if they're gonna be sitting around for a while, I'm just gonna I'm gonna include them sooner or later. Uh, but for now, we have we we have a sh so many movies and TV shows here that I don't don't even know where to start, and I don't know if I'm, I'm if I'm gonna be able to get through all of this um, in one video. But it, so it's either gonna be uh, quick reviews, um, but still a very long video, I suppose, or I'm gonna have to come back to some of this because I don't know if I'm gonna have time for all of this. I mean, it, I, I'll see how long it takes and then I'll decide a bit later on. But um, yeah, in any case it's gonna be a long video, so sit back, relax, and uh, so let's talk about some movies. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess there's nothing else to say. Uh, but um, yeah, since I guess I'll, I'll address this once again, since uh, since I was gone for about four months, uh, stuff has definitely accumulated. So um, this is a this is a bunch of stuff that I that I had from then that I bought that I've been watching over that period and um, stuff that I some stuff that I might even have seen before that. I don't I don't know. Maybe not really a lot of stuff, but um, some stuff I'm pro I probably bought before that. But I just didn't get to them right away. So, just a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different places and from a bunch of different, varyingly long ago. I mean, some of this stuff is a few days old. Some of this stuff is months old. Anyway, um, we'll, we're just gonna pick stuff from from the piles here, and we'll see how it goes. Um, some of this stuff is sort of categorized, but a lot of it is just random. So we'll see. Uh, let's start with uh, Interstellar. Which I meant to watch, but I it's been sitting out in front of my TV now, and I'm just getting sick of looking at it. So I'm just gonna put it away for a while, and then eventually, when I feel like watching it, I will do that. I have seen this before, but I bought this. Um, I guess I think I ordered this because I wanted to see this again, and I do. It's just that I've had so much to watch, and I don't, you know. And then there's Netflix and HBO, which is keeping me busy too. Uh, that's not helping. <laughs> uh, that's not helping in my everyday struggle trying to decrease the size of my of these stacks but anyway um this was a, a good movie i saw this in a the movie theater with a friend and um yeah we did we did make fun of a couple of things but uh as you do <laughs> i guess uh but for the most part i think we, we both enjoyed it so um i'll check this out again eventually uh, and then i'll show four titles that i picked up today i, I was um, at some flea markets today or some secondhand stores and I found four titles. Uh, I love picking up documentaries whenever I can find them, so I picked up one by Oliver Stone called Commandan Commandante, an interview with Fidel Castro. Um, he recently did, uh, I guess, I didn't know that he had made one before, but he recently, um, he's been promoting uh, an, an, a sort of a, a same kind of interview documentary about, or with uh, starring uh, Vladimir Putin and so maybe this is kind of like the same thing. So I, I just wanted to get that. And then one more documentary, uh, a Swedish documentary uh, called Färi Klang. And I don't really know how to translate that, but it's a pretty short documentary, one hour long, by Jan Troell, 
Um, he, uh, you might know him from, um, well, what's it called? Uh, Everlasting Moments, something like that. I think I think Criterion released that movie actually, so you might know about that one. Uh, um, and actually, um, a really nice box that is coming out in um, maybe like a month or two months uh, with some a lot of his movies that I really wanna I really wanna get that, but um, it's quite pricey, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then I was surprised to find uh, Gaspar Noé's however you pronounce his name, uh, his latest movie, Love, on display. <laughs> it was, I mean, one, one of these stores, that they, they choose to display like a few movies. And this was, this was one that, I, that they had, this was one of the ones that they put up for display, which I was a bit surprised by. But, um, yeah, it's Gaspar Noé and he makes pretty uh, intense movies. Um, so we'll see about this one. I haven't seen Enter the Void yet, and I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, this is not one that I really wanted to see, but I found this at a second-hand store, and it's an artificial eye release, and two bucks or whatever, I, I, I mean, I couldn't pass it up, but I don't know if I'm really gonna get to this any time soon, I kinda doubt it. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned, Enter the Void is another one that he made a few years ago, that I, I wanna see more than this one, but uh, I, I came across it, so I picked it up. Um, and then we got from that to this, uh, but this is a um, Swedish uh, young adult slash children's show, I guess, that I used to watch uh, a lot when I was, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how old, but maybe 10, 10, 11 years old, maybe, I don't know. Around that time, I was really, I really liked this show, and I've seen most of these episodes a lot, many times. Uh, I remember when this was released, uh, this DVD, I, I meant to get it, but then I didn't, and then it became out of print, so I don't think it's that expensive to get this used now, but um, I found this for, I think, $4, $5, so I got it, uh, 12, 12 episodes, I guess there might be a couple movies too, but yeah, th this was fun, I've been meaning to pick this up for a while now, so I did that, um, alright then, you know, let's do these now. These have been sitting around waiting for a long time, waiting for me to finish the show. We got a bunch of seasons of ER, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, uh, 5, and then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Basically, um, I've already talked about, um, about those, um, but I had the Swedish releases of 1 to 6, and since I Sweden only released uh, the 6 first seasons for some reason, um, but um, so so I got the rest from uh, Amazon UK, and since I had the rest of them uh, in these uh, UK releases, I just wanted to get the other ones one to six, and have those uh, you know, in from the same place or in in the same type of release or whatever, uh, to make it more um, nice looking on the shelf, I guess. So I guess I one two three, I guess four and six. Do I? I think I need to get four and six. Yeah. So I need two more, but um, the rest of them that, 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 aren't, that aren't here, I guess, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, I guess, they're already on the shelf. Uh, but these are the important ones, I guess, because these I don't think I've shown before, I at least haven't talked about them. So um, I finally finished ER a few months ago. And uh, I, don't know, I, don't, I, don't really <laughs> I don't really know what to say exactly. Um, I've been enjoying this show. For sure. Uh, I mean, the first um, maybe six, um, I suppose maybe the first eight seasons, something like that. Because um, I think it's in season eight where a certain character leaves. So around that time, it sort of started to go downhill a little bit. But I still, I've still enjoyed it uh, since then. I mean, there's been some seasons where, uh, for a few episodes uh, or maybe a bit longer, sometimes I've not really been all that into it. And for many of these episodes, I've just sort of had them on in the background. And I've paid attention when something happens to uh, the main characters, you know, the doctors and, and stuff. Uh, not really paid attention to all of the um, the patients because I, I I don't know. It's it's a lot of j j just the same stuff. So um, some of this has been background material in a way, but um, still I've enjoyed watching most of it. Um, I do like this show a lot. Um, it's uh, it's probably a bit a bit too long. It didn't have to be go on for 15 seasons, but um, 
you know, I've, I've enjoyed watching it. I think I started watching that three and a half years ago. Uh, I don't know, I just happened to remember that. <laughs> so, uh, it took me about three years, a bit more than, th than three years to, to get through that. Um, and then let's, let, let's just do another, another big stack of, of DVDs here, and then I'm gonna get to some more interesting stuff. I'm gonna try to be pretty quick here. Here we have a bunch of CKY stuff. CKY, CKY. Uh, those are CKY DVDs. Um, sort of before Jackass, but not, not with all of the Jackasses, but <laughs> with some of them. And then I picked up two Stevo DVDs. I, see, I saw one of these. I don't even know which one. I think maybe this one, and I really did not enjoy it, so I'm not not even gonna bother with that. I didn't really enjoy CKY too much either. I think I have maybe one or two more that I haven't seen. I think I think it's the um, the documentary one that I haven't seen yet. But you know, the reason why I bought all all of this stuff is because I got a Jackass box set recently, with, um, with which I really enjoyed watching. Well. I enjoyed watching the special features. Uh, the, just, it had hours and hours of sp special features that I had never seen before, and I enjoyed it so much. So, so I just decided to pick up everything Jackass related that I that I could find, and so and this is what I bought. Uh, but like I said, I haven't really been enjoying it too much. Uh, this one, Haggard, I had no intention of watching really, but I just I just got it just to to complete the sort of collection. Although I'm not even sure if I'm going to have these. In the collection, or I might just bring bring them down to the basement because they're gonna take up a bunch of space. I mean, that that's a lot of space for stuff you don't really care about. And I have to um, I have to um, <laughs> uh, sort of prioritize more what to put on the shelves, especially after all this stuff is going up on the shelves. I'm gonna have like almost no more room left, so I'm gonna have to uh, bring down a bunch of um, you know DVDs that I don't care about anymore to the basement. So. Uh, anyway, and then Gum, Gum, yeah, Gumball 3000, the movie which has Ryan Dunn in it. I watched some of this. I didn't, I didn't really like it too much. And then another one, Gumball 3000 Miles. This apparently has Ben Margera as well. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was uh, not my, <laughs> uh, not the best purchase, I guess. I, I haven't really been enjoying them too much. I, I was hoping that I, that I'd enjoy them more than what I have been. But um, anyway, so that's that. Um, and then I decided to pick up a bunch of Alien releases just because I liked the movie so much, or well, the first two anyway. Um, and um, I, you know, I see myself some. There, there is so much Alien, so many Alien figures by NECA, um, and so many cool releases that one day I want to have like a whole shelf with alien stuff displayed. So I'm trying to get some stuff now and then and eventually in the future I'm gonna have a really cool display shelf just full of alien stuff. So uh, I got this um, alien, alien Anthology 35th Anniversary Edition. It's called something like Nostromo Doors. <laughs> Maybe not. But something like you can see the, um, the design. It's sort of like the, uh, the doors open. I don't know if I have to show you really, but now I'm, I've gotten started, so... Okay, so they open up like this, and then there's some yeah, there's some posters and a comic and stuff in this. Um, I'm not going to be able to get this back on. Maybe, uh, well, anyway. Um, so I got that from CD on. Alright, well, let, let's do that later. And then, uh, this one I'm a little bit upset about. <laughs> The 35th anniversary edition. There's not really any special features on here that I don't have, but um, they're fun to collect. Uh, this is um, this is the Aliens 30th anniversary, and they're you know you can see that they're they've gone for the same type of design, but this one has a nice sturdy slipcase, so it, it has pro it's been protected during shipment shipping because well it's nice quality, but this one it's just flimsy cardboard, and so it's been damage down here and um, you know it's it doesn't look all that nice um, unfortunately but um, oh well I, I got those then I got a couple from France too uh, glorious money wasting this <laughs> but, um, I don't do this too often get a bunch of releases that I don't need uh, just because I like collecting them I, I there's only a few 
like universes that I do that with and Alien is one of the very few ones so uh, but anyway so uh, this is a, a steelbook from France this steelbook is available in with English writing too but this one was cheaper I guess it might it, the English one or you know, English friendly one might be out of print but this one from France wasn't and it, it was pretty cheap so just a nice steelbook um, this is this this is part of a line of steelbooks with the same type of designs on the cover. Uh, I'm not gonna take these. So these I I hate these, and I I don't I don't wanna take them off these stickers uh, more than I need to. So uh, I'm just gonna show you the front, and that's it. <laughs> but yeah, steelbook of Alien, and then this one I've known about for a while. I've always thought that this cover looked so nice, so I was happy to get this. Also a French edition. Uh, this one I don't. I, I think this is the only. Well, I might be mistaken. Uh, does this exist in an English-friendly release? I don't know. I've only seen the, the French one, but it's uh, a digibook, um, which I, I think it might be the only digibook that I have. I can't think of another one. Um, so if so, then this is my first digibook. Um, yeah, really nice cover. This is going to be nice to display like that in the future. So there you go. And uh, then since we just talked about a, uh, well, horror, I'm gonna keep uh, talking about some horror stuff from Arrow. So we're gonna start with Evil Ed, which I was really happy to see this released. Um, uh, this is a Swedish movie from uh, mid-90s. It took them a while to finish the movie. Um, I, I've seen this once before. Uh, I could talk so long about this release and about this movie, but I'll just mention a few things. Um, first of all, I remember seeing the um, uh, this one of the, the VHS covers to this in a video store back in the day, um, and <laughs> I sort of came back to to that VHS because there there were a couple images on it. I mean, I wouldn't dare to rent it. I don't think I would have been allowed because I was like, well, just a child when I at, at that time, but. Um, I remember seeing the cover and then turning it around and having, I think this was one of the pictures on the back, but not, you know, not the, um, I mean, not this, but, you know, the original image, I guess. And then one image where he, he, someone cuts off an arm. And I was kind of disturbed, but at the same time in, uh, intrigued by those images. And so I kept coming back to that VHS and kind of picking it out and kind of looking at those pictures again and kind of being a bit grossed out <laughs> and then then putting it back again and then renting some comedy um, so <laughs> I've known about this movie for a long time um, but I, I didn't see it until um, many years later uh, and then I saw it again I guess for the second time or maybe third time I'm not sure on this blu-ray right here uh, and I knew that that um, they were gonna release uh, not Arrow but I knew that um, the uh, the director and, and whatnot they had been working on um, a special edition for this for a few years and I've sort of followed that development for quite a few years now and I just maybe I sort of given up hope but I was really so I was really surprised and pleasantly pleasantly surprised when I saw Arrow releasing this announcing this uh, so obviously they they found the best company <laughs> for this for this for this movie um yeah and this has a three three hour documentary which is insane um which i watched all of it it's it's in swedish so if you if you don't know swedish if you don't know swedish you're going to have to read subtitles and i don't think arrow had anything to do with that uh because they produced the documentary it took them like 5 years i think and it's all documented here too the making of the documentary i mean there's not only a th 3 hour documentary but there's a making of that documentary too on on one of these discs so um, I think they produced the documentary and then once it was finished they were maybe were in contact with Arrow and then it was released and so anyway um, otherwise they might have done it in, in English I, I don't know but so it's it's in Swedish um, the documentary and but uh, yes but I, I really enjoyed the documentary I guess at three hours long it's a bit longer than it needs to be but I, I really enjoyed it and I will mention I brought this out just for the hell of it. Um, insane three disc edition. This movie I have to say is pretty terrible, but it's from the same people or at least from the same director. And this one also has like a three hour documentary 
um, which is so much better than the movie is. Um, so I was kind of familiar with the style, I guess, or with it felt familiar watching the documentary for this because I'd, I had I had already seen this and um, also a really in-depth documentary about the making of a horror film. Uh, so it felt familiar, and so that was kind of nice, I, I suppose. But um, this movie is much better, better than that. I don't think this deserves an error release or anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, this, if you don't know about Evil Ed, it's um, sort of like a, a splatter homage to American movies like Evil Dead, obviously. Uh, it's in the title, um, <laughs> so, sort of, and uh, <clears throat> other movies too. But uh, yeah, it is a Swedish movie, even though it's in English. Um, I guess the actors on set, they, they spoke English. They, they are from Sweden, but they spoke English, just to make it more sort of accessible uh, in other countries. And then uh, it was dubbed by, maybe not only by English speaking, speaking people, but it was dubbed by a couple Americans, I think. And then maybe some of the dubbing is by Swedes. Maybe some of the actors dubbed themselves even, I'm not sure about that. Um, but so it is a bit confusing. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I think um, some of the uh, English dubbing is dubbed by Swedes because they, they talk about that in the documentary. Some Americans being confused, they couldn't uh, pin down where the accent was from. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, anyway, but um, yeah, it's a fun movie and a really, really good release. I really enjoyed uh, going through all of that. Uh, and then Pieces, which uh, a really good release, obviously, and uh, pretty good movie. It's a slasher, and it's slasher has never been my favorite genre, and it still isn't, but I, I do enjoy them. Not as much as a splatter or body horror or fantasy horror or whatever, but I do enjoy slashers. And this is definitely one that intrigued me, and it was a really nice release and stuff, so I got this, and um, yeah. Uh, I don't have as much to say about this as Evil Dead, but um, it, it was uh, pretty good. Um, no, uh, more than pretty good, it was a definitely, uh, definitely a good horror movie, uh, I would say. And then maybe the best of them all, um, the House Collection, all four movies. Uh, this was released in the US as well, but I guess they only had the rights for the first two, so if you want all four, then you're gonna have to get the UK release, although it's out of print now, I suppose, I, I think. Uh, but yeah, I, I've seen the first two movies before, and uh, I remember enjoying them, uh, but uh, I like them more. I feel like I have a new appreciation for them now, with this release. This is, this is such a nice box set. Uh, I am late showing this stuff just because I've been away for a while, but um, so I'm sure you've seen people talking about this stuff by now. But but still, um, I want to show mine too. So <laughs> yeah, fun movies. Um, the third one is not, third one. It, the third one is not really um, a house movie, but um, I, maybe yeah. I suppose they they kind of become worse and worse. The first one is the best. And then the second one, and then the third, and then the fourth, as it tends to be, I suppose. But they're all fun, I suppose. Uh, good documentaries too, and uh, yeah, just a wonderful set. And then the last one from Arrow, a really good one too, Brain Damage. Um, really good movie, really kind of odd, uh, weird movie, but a very enjoyable one. Definitely, definitely stands out among the horror movies. Um, uh, it's by Frank Keenan Lauder, and he's made uh, movies like Basket Case and um, Frankenhooker, which I haven't seen. Uh, but th this movie I had seen before too. I, ha I had this on DVD, but I definitely wanted to upgrade. Uh, this has just a bunch of extras. Really uh, good release. Um, yeah, that's that's that, I guess. Um, uh. I'm kind of sick of talking about movies now. I don't think I'm going to get through all of this, to be honest. But we'll do some more stuff here. Um, a documentary box set, one that I have that I should have watched earlier, but it took me until a few months ago to, um, to watch this. I found this, not for a very cheap price, but I found it for an okay price at a, at, at a store, so I just decided to pick it up. Um, this is a, it's a trilogy of documentaries about these two people. Um, in the first one I guess they are teenagers, 
Then the second one, it's about a decade later. And then the third one, um, after the, well, well, he um, he died in the second one. So the third one, the third one is only about him, and that's a, a lot later. That's probably I don't even know 30, 30, 35 years, maybe not that. No, no, maybe not. That, maybe twenty years later. Um, I don't know. It's it's a long time. Uh, after the the first one, but um, it's um, the, their documentary is about people living in Stockholm, um, sort of a social commentary on what was going on then, I guess, with um, uh, people dying of drugs uh, left and right in Stockholm. Uh, a lot of people didn't have a place to stay, and uh, it was this sort of epidemic of um, um, yeah of heroin or whatever. I'm not the I'm not your go-to guy about drugs, so, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. So it was a, a tragic situation, I guess, and he was unfortunately one of the victims. But um, the 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 movies differ slightly in tone. Uh, I'd say the second one is the best one, at, at least my favorite one. The first one was was pretty good. Uh, third one was okay, not the best, um, but the second one was just so devastating and so dark and um, really well done, really good documentary, really good music too, really good music. Um, yeah, it just creates this kind of devastating picture of uh, what was going on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a really nice box set. That I've been wanting to get my hands on this for a long time now, and now I have my hands on it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you can find this these with the English subtitles, I would definitely recommend checking these out. Um, they might not be that well known overseas, I'm not sure, but in Sweden uh, they're defi definitely known as some of the absolute best documentaries. Um, and I guess we can't compete with uh, other countries when it comes to, to documentaries. I mean, it's, I mean, whatever, but um, th they are seen as some of the, uh, the best documentaries that this country has to offer, and once again the second one is my favorite. So, yeah, really nice box set. And then, you know, when I come across Swedish documentaries, although this might not be a Swedish documentary, I don't know, maybe it's not, uh, it says language Polish, but when I come across Swedish, Swedish releases of documentaries, I tend to pick them up, pick them up if they look uh, interesting. Um, this is called uh, Forgotten, I guess, in uh, plural. <laughs> so, um, I haven't seen it, but I guess um, I, you know this is this is one of those that I'm not really planning on checking out uh, right away. So I'm gonna put this up on the shelf, and we'll see when I get to that. And then these I've had for a long time. I, I was, I think I was, I think it's yeah, I was. It's been months. Maybe maybe I did. Maybe it's even been since last year. I don't know. But uh, two David Attenborough releases. Uh, David Attenborough at ninety, which is basically a. Um, an evening with David Attenborough, an interview with him, and um, they just go—they're going through his whole career, and then it has this uh, Attenborough and the giant dinosaur as well, um, and then uh, the Great Barrier Reef, which was really, um, really good. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I don't have too much to say about them, but it's been a while since I saw them too. But I, I do like collecting David Attenborough stuff. I have quite a few of them now, but there are so many releases on DVD and Blu-ray of uh, David Attenborough's uh, nature, doc nature documentaries, and I have many more to get. Uh, then I have, a, a, I suppose, a stand-up show, Jeff Dunham arguing with myself. I was a fan of his uh, about a, a decade ago, and then I haven't really seen much uh, in a long time, but this one is from 2006, apparently, so for some reason I missed this one, I haven't seen this one, um, so um, I will eventually, I guess. Uh, and this is maybe the only one, the only release that I've ever upgraded from Blu-ray to a nicer Blu-ray. This is Heat, uh, Director's Definitive Edition. So I have had this on, on DVD and then Blu-ray and, and now this. Um, I, get, I think that the tra it might have a new transfer, but it also had a, um, a couple Q&As. Uh, from last year, I think, uh, and I did watch this again. I actually rewatched this movie last year, but 
but then I, I felt like watching it again when I got this release, so so I did. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really solid um, heist film. Uh, really great uh, action sequences and a fantastic ending. Um, we still have two big stacks to go, so yeah, I'm not gonna get get through all of this, unfortunately. But um, we got a movie called American Splendor, which I don't know if I've talked about before, but if I have shown this before, then I, I hadn't seen it then. Um, I met up with a friend of mine, and we usually talk about movies, and he mentioned this. Uh, he talked about Paul Giamatti as one of his favorite actors, and he mentioned American Splendor, and I was like, oh, I have that on DVD, I haven't seen it yet. But uh, So then when I got home, I, I, I just decided to check it out, and I really loved it. It's a really good movie. Um, about this, uh, Paul Giamatti plays this guy Harvey Picar. He was, uh, I guess, an un underground uh, comic. Uh, not, no, not, not comic, not, not comedian, but um, uh, he, 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 um, he, he. I don't even know what the word is. He, he uh, made comics, graphic novels. Well, not really, but something like that. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Um, and then I picked up two Trailer Park Boys DVDs uh, <laughs> because uh, I've started watching this show on Netflix now and I've really, really been enjoying it. Um, and uh, I've seen uh, the first uh, seven seasons and then it was renewed a few, uh, a few years later on Netflix. So from season eight... Uh, upwards, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen yet because there's still one movie um, that came out before the season eight called "Don't Legalize It," which is also on Netflix, and I haven't seen that movie yet. So I'm gonna watch that movie and then keep going with uh, season eight. But the reason why I got these are uh, the movie from 2006 and then a movie called "Countdown to Liquor Day," is because these were the only two that it, that, that are not on Netflix, basically. So I needed these, and I've seen these both now, and you know this one was okay. Uh, this one was a bit better, but I mean the show is that's where where it's at, I suppose. The show is really funny, uh, Canadian um, comedy show. If you have Netflix, I really suggest checking checking out Trailer Park Boys. Um, I actually bought the the first movie too, or so I thought, because um, uh, the first one from 1999, the IMD, the IMDb page of that shows a DVD with a different cover than this uh, and so I, I just thought that that DVD was the one from 1999 the first movie before there was a TV show I guess kind of like Curb, Curb Your Enthusiasm or something like that where they made a movie first and then that, turn, that turn in, turned into a TV show um, but that movie um, that the DVD I bought that I thought was the, the first one was this one again? So I bought this one twice. So the one, the, the image on IMDb shows the wrong, Im, uh, the wrong DVD for, um, for the 1999 movie because, um, well, there is no DVD release of that. I don't know exactly why, but it's um, hasn't been released. So uh, hopefully one day it will. But um, yeah, so I suppose I've taken a break with this now. I'm gonna get back to it eventually. Um, but I really have been enjoying Trailer Park Boys. Um, let's do some uh, Brit British uh, sitcoms or comedy shows. I picked up uh, That Mitchell and Webb Look. Maybe, maybe I've shown this before. I think I might have shown this before, actually. Um, well, uh, Series 2. Uh, yeah, this was, you know, it's a funny show. It's by uh, Robert Webb and uh, David Mitchell. They, they made Peep Show, which is one of my favorite shows. And that's a sketch comedy show, which uh, is, it's, you know, quite funny. Uh, then I picked up a show called Stella, series 1 and 2, uh, set in Wales, uh, starring and created by Ruth Jones. Uh, she made it together with um, uh, James Corden, who is now a late night host in America. They made Gavin and Stacey, um, I don't know how long ago, but a few years before this, I suppose. And that's one. that's a show that I really have enjoyed. So I knew about Ruth Jones having made a show called Stella and have been wanting to see that for a while and now I picked up season 1 and 2. It, it's good, um, definitely a fun show. Not my favorite, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a very pleasant show, I suppose. And I love the scenery. Um, uh, yeah, so fun show. And then um, 
series one, two, uh, yeah, two and three of not going out. I have a couple more of these, but I haven't seen more than this uh, as of now. But uh, yeah, this is is funny, I suppose. Not, you know, I don't love it. Um, it's taken me a while to get through them, I guess. And I have four and five. They've been sitting around for a while. I haven't gotten to gotten gotten to them yet because, you know, I don't love it. it, it it's funny, but um, yeah, not not my favorite, I guess. Maybe the show gets better later on. I don't know. Um, happy endings, which is a an okay uh, comedy with a bunch of well-known people. I did enjoy this. I thought that there was something about the pacing of this movie that that really worked well. It's a two-hour movie, so it's a bit too long, but it, it, not, it doesn't really overstay its welcome. I guess it's it does work on some level. Uh, pretty enjoyable movie that I don't haven't really heard many people talking about. And because I enjoy like road movie stuff and travel stuff, and that combined with comedy, uh, I I. I, I f found out about this a blue collar comedy tour the movie with some comedians that I'm not a fan of and that I don't really know anything about uh, southern comedians and I, I suppose that's not really my thing because this was not funny to me I watched some of this and I couldn't get into it I didn't like their comedy and I didn't like them and I, <laughs> and I didn't like um, the way they edited edited this, I thought it was going to be a road movie, a documentary type thing. But they but they've staged a bunch of things in between the stand-up shows. They, they've gone on tour together these these four stand-up comedians, and then in between uh, clips from their stand-up, they have sort of done. Uh, I thought it was it was going to be just more of a raw road movie type documentary thing. But they've yeah they've made some kind of scripted uh, maybe not scripted maybe it's improvised but. They they're acting, you know, and I just didn't like it really. So I, I, I turned it off pretty quickly. I have to say, um, Mission to Mars. Um, I randomly picked this up a while ago. Um, really fun sci-fi movie with um, Tim Robbins and Gary Sinise and um, um, what's his name, Don Cheadle. Uh, it's you know the ending is a bit I don't know it's. I suppose the ending will divide audiences. It's a bit odd, but, you know. It kind of works. It's um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was pretty funny. I mean, funny. It was pretty fun, pretty enjoyable. Um, I have. I remember seeing one scene of this before. Where uh, spoiler here, I suppose. So if you don't want to know what happens to Tim Robbins, then I'm about to tell you. He's in space and he's sort of um, drifting or whatever. They he's floating his base and he's they, they can't catch him basically so uh, yeah I guess that that's what happened and he decides to just take his helmet off uh, and his face it turns all I don't know exactly what happens to a human body in, in space without a uh, suit but his face kind of crumbles and turns grey and stuff and I remember seeing a scene in a, a movie in space when I was a child or a young teenager or whatever where where that happened, and I never knew what movie that was, but I guess now I do know. It's Mission to Mars, and it's it's pretty good. It is pretty cheesy, but um, I I enjoyed it. Um, and then we got a Swedish documentary here called um, The Cow Women. Um, I've seen this before. I just found the DVD pretty cheap in a store, so I picked it up, and I definitely wanted to wanted to see this again. Um, it's a really good documentary. Uh, one of my favorite Swedish documentaries, probably, about these two women living with their cows. Although, in in, in particular, this I, I think if it wasn't for her, they would have probably not made the documentary because she's sort of she's the interesting part of the documentary. I mean, she's she's interesting too, but this woman right here, she's only like I think like a couple years. They're sisters, and uh, living on a, at a farm and whatever. And she's only a couple years older than her, I think, but she looks like a decade older or even more than that. She, and she, I guess she hasn't taken care of herself. And her posture is like nothing I've seen before. I mean, you know, most people walk like this, upright. And when, when they get older, maybe they wa start walking like this a little bit. But I'm not kidding. She walks like that. You know, no exaggeration. Her head is like by her feet when she's walking. And I don't know what happened to her. Uh, she's been pushed around by her cow. That even happens in the movie. I guess she's in her 
mid to late 70s and it happens in the documentary when they're filming um, a cow kind of pushes her and she falls down and I guess that must have happened uh, many times in the past I guess that's maybe the reason why she walks like that I don't know uh, maybe she even broke her back I have no idea but she just hasn't taken care of herself and so she's a very interesting character um, but uh, oh I said I, I said the cow women I guess it actually has an English title women with cows I think it might have yeah it has English subtitles even um, so uh, if you find this with English subtitles really really recommend this um, it is a really good uh, documentary I think she died a few years ago, the older woman, uh, the older sister. You know what, I think I'm gonna, it's, that's gonna have to do. Um, I can hear my phone, ring, my phone ringing too, so that just, you know, I, I might as well stop now because I've been filming for a while and um, I do have another stack and then a few here to talk about, but I'm, I'm gonna have to save those for next time, so, uh, but I think I got through a pretty large amount of stuff so this is gonna have to be the thumbnail to this video <laughs> um, and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed it I'll see you soon with uh, more uh, pickups and unboxings and stuff and um, uh, yeah see you soon